Fantastic. So, we have expectations from you. We've had expectations from what the AMREF University team are looking at and how we engage them moving forward, which is important for us. But as much as that is the case of where we are, the question some of you might or could be asking, but they're not asking it because they're not vocalizing it, is what is this reculture thing? And I've seen somebody ask, looking at me like, how did you know? I'm a mind reader, so I can help you with minds. Anyway, so the culture as an organization is a social enterprise. And as mentioned, we work with young healthcare professionals, youth leaders, and youth-led organizations. And our mission at the core of it is, how do we improve access to quality healthcare services? And if you're going to improve access to healthcare services, then you need to look at it from some of the conversations that we'll be having, and some of them are the same conversation that we had last year on the health system pillars. Look at it from the leadership and governance component, health service delivery component. Then beyond that, then you look at the human workforce, because if you're talking about delivery of healthcare, there has to be professionals and healthcare workers who are doing the work. That is a critical bit. But in all that, we need resources. So then healthcare financing comes in as a critical component. But if you're doing that, almost every community kienda, your hospital yata nilitoka siku tibiwa. Why? Hakupata dawa. Healthcare supply chain, resilience and integrity. If there's no product, there's no healthcare. And that is a critical bit. But then now we're getting to a point that for you to make a decision, you need to have the basis for that decision that you're making, which is information. But digital technologies are helping us do that. So then we look at it from health information management systems and the digital technologies in healthcare. So when you look at all those pillars coming in, working with youth leaders, young healthcare professionals and youth led organizations, how do we achieve that mission? And what role do we really play to make that a reality? We are young healthcare professionals. I graduated like three, four years ago. But in that journey as it has been, there is a lot that we still need to do, but there are also a lot of challenges and dynamics in the environment that need to be transformed. And that is where we have the framework where as we get out of school, the dynamics of the practice environment are not as clear, but we need a house, we need a space where we can say we're going to engage and learn together and collaboratively engage in exploring the future. That is where culture comes in, to offer that platform to young healthcare professionals. If you look at the back, behind that corner, there's a banner, it's reading Youth Voices Network. The Youth Voices Network is our entry point. If you're going to work with youth leaders, youth, young healthcare professionals and youth-led organizations, that is your entry point into being part of us and being part of the mission to improve access to healthcare services and to engage with us. Some of the key offerings and some of the key contributions that we're looking at is training and capacity building. And when we talk about training, don't assume that we're offering you a new pharmacy degree, medical degree, or nursing degree. No, we don't do that. We understand that if you're coming in from your undergraduate training, you have the technical knowledge, right? You guys understand heart diseases. You understand all the mental health disorders that are there. But do you understand how to package the technical knowledge and make it fit for the consumer, the patient, and the community that we're serving in that information. So that is where our training is focusing on equipping with the translational competencies that will help you translate the technical knowledge into a service or a solution to the market. And as we link that transition from the product, from the technical knowledge into the service to the community, then we're saying, yes, you want to do that, but what will make you do it? And that links us to the next problem that we're dealing with as young healthcare professionals and young people generally. Unemployment. Which is an issue, right? And even this, I mean, though you did say I will talk about it, expectations, networking with people, looking at opportunities, maybe looking for the potential employer, whatever it is, that is a reality. You don't have to lie about it. But as that is going to happen, the only other alternative is the entrepreneurial aspect. You have a skill, you have a solution that can be of value to the market, where do you plug it and offer it to the market? Maybe from the network you could come in as a key facilitator of a session, we have the trainings with the leader, facilitating those workshops that are key. You'll have gotten unemployment, right? As a trainer, as a teacher, a facilitator of a session somewhere, that is already a win for you. If you are a videographer, we have our main videographer and actually photographer for the session, who is a pharmacist by training, if you guys didn't know. That is how we engage and give you a platform to do the work that you do. 
and we hope that that grows us within the network as we move along. You are interested in global health project management, translation of science and related. How can you plug into the network, do some research, we do the research together, we publish the findings and we build a portfolio of work. And that is also some of the conversations that we are talking about. Then the last key thing and the most important bit is the network that we are building and how the networks are propelling us into the next frontiers of where we want to go. I'm glad to say that this year we rolled we out the Youth Voices Network last year during the summit. And during the launch of the summit, we made a commitment that as much as the network is still in the formative phases, we'll do the much we can to help one another to hold each other's hands. We've had ongoing bi-weekly sessions, which are still ongoing. We had the last one last week. And as much as we're having them, people are benefiting and gaining to understand that I'm not alone in this struggle. Because that is important. If you're feeling you are stuck and you're alone, the dynamics are not as fair to you, right? But if you have somebody who understands the nuances, be able to form an alliance of change makers working together to envision a better future. But then beyond that, how do we leverage on other networks as well? Some of the people within the network have gotten opportunities, some have gone for further studies, some have gotten internship, which have become jobs. But that is how much we can do. And our hope is the system is not okay. I hope we all agree with that, right? Things need to change. But for things to change, somebody has to make them change. That somebody has to be between me and you and with the among ourselves. And for that change to happen then, we have to, one, imagine a better future. Envision that future and ask ourselves how do we achieve it. Build capability in ourselves to go do the work. Then when we're in the right spaces with the right people, with the right knowledge and the right skills, we'll be able to make that difference. And that is what we are hoping for. So as you're getting here, ask yourself how you're learning, how you're engaging, what are you networking with, and let's envision a better future together. For this year's summit, nurturing young healthcare professionals towards the actualization of SDG number three, good health and well-being for all. What kind of support do you need? What would it look like? Who has the ability to help you get that? And once you understand that, then we can see how do we collaboratively reimagine that future and work towards it together. And with that, thank you for being part of the session. And thank you for being here with us.